Uh, at the center of today's ceremony are you, the students of the Diplomatic Academy, uh, those who start their time this year, and those old hands who begin their second year of studies. I can say my own two years as a student at this institution have formed my professional life tremendously. I've lived and studied in an exhilarating atmosphere, although that was some years ago, uh, and it was good to have young people from all corners of the earth around me. Here I acquired the prerequisites for my later career, the diplomatic service, which led me the last positions to London and to Moscow. Uh, it is now my task to help you to position our work as a leading postgraduate center of excellence for you, the students, uh, as well as for those who want to shape what I would call the climate of internationalness and openness in this country uh, in an ever globalizing world. With the entire team of this academy and all our cooperation partners, we will prepare you in the best possible way for something that in truth we can only develop together, the future of our world, which depends maybe even more on you than on the teachers you find here. The DA equips you, I hope, with profound academic qualifications, language skills, and other competencies. But we also encourage you to participate in extracurricular activities. Try to see Vienna, try to see this Central European hub. Uh, and these activities uh, are things like strategic gaming, excursions, activities with our Diplomatic Academy Student Initiative, which I welcome here, the DASI representatives, uh, and uh, these uh, initiatives uh, uh, include various study trips, and I, I hope that will be highlights for you, going to uh, European institutions, going to Bulgaria, Ukraine, Kazakhstan, and also, if you are brave enough, a 10-day-long trip by bus through the Balkan countries, which I can recommend tremendously, I have to say. You will organize, through your student organization, a typical Viennese ball here on our premises, an academic conference, a big one, as I know from last year, talks. You will write for your magazine polemics, uh, and you can choose among many committees and debating clubs, and I hope you will choose uh, as many as possible on sports, but also on sustainability, on gender society, and also a wine society is present for your work. I was told that the wine tasting competitions were won among all Vienna universities over the past years, whatever that means. <laughs> you can also take advantage of a network of alumni, and I, I, I really propose that you use them. A number of them are in top positions already, and they stay closely linked to our alma mater and can help you to prepare for your careers. So please use the op opportunities of the club DA as well as the career services with, which we will prepare for you. I think you will become part of a community, not only learning things that we all need like emotional intelligence and intercultural competencies, but you will be part of a truly international family with an atmosphere of plurilingualism on our, co uh, on our campus, which I hope will be vibrant, whatever the, the weather is like. The student body, let me tell who, who we and you are, also to you, Mr. President. The student body in this academic year is 184 students in four programs. It consists of a bit more than 40% Austrians, and the rest come from four different continents, and this rest comes from 41 countries. So altogether, 42 countries studying at the moment this year at the, at the academy. And the academic background is also it's quite diverse, I would say. Traditionally, diplomats and people who work in the international field came from law and possibly from economics. Now we have, as the largest number, from political science. Uh, but there is also students with an economic background, languages background, uh, even some uh, uh, historians. Uh, we even have an archaeologist, and there is even some expert on yachts and power craft uh, engine design, I'm told. 
I did not meet him yet, but if he's here, I would be interested. I think Vienna is a perfect place to study international relations and to experience diplomacy at first hand. We are not only a UN seat, as you know, but also hosting a huge number of other international organizations that you will be able to visit and maybe also do internships there. Again, something which we recommend. This institution itself can look back on a very long history. We are proud that uh, uh, we're celebrating this year the birthday of our founder, Maria Theresia. She founded this institution in 1754, and it's still, it's still alive. And this is important, I think. It's the oldest still existing institution for this sort of education anywhere in the world. As much as diplomacy and international professions have changed over the centuries and are changing now, the DA has changed, but some things remain the same. We are committed to academic excellence, which is the first priority that we have. And we are also committed to the principles of interdisciplinarity and to the fundamental values of tolerance and openness. We do this not only with the students we have here, we do this also with executive programs, which we started as an academy when the Iron Curtain came down. When it was important to educate young civil servants, but also st students uh, uh, on, on so you can call it transformation uh, management. We started in 1991, immediately after the fall of the, of the Iron Curtain. They are for junior diplomats and for civil servants, and now we are offering this for young people from all over Asia, I would say. Uh, just recently, we had students from Caucasus and civil servants from Caucasus uh, and uh, Central Asia with us. Um, and we will have a, a, a students from Africa at the end of October, from Kazakhstan in November, and many, many more. Today, I would like but also to give a very special welcome to the 19 master students from Israel, Palestine, and Jordan who are here for an executive program for almost three years. So welcome to all of you. You just started. <laughs> you already are. I also would like to welcome our exchange students from Stanford University, Paul Kraft and George Ramiro Mata, and more exchange students will follow from our programs with MGIMO in Moscow, the China Foreign Affairs University, Korea University, and I'm very happy to say so in the future from the Hebrew University in Jerusalem. Uh, we offer also cooperative degree programs, one with the Fletcher School of Law and Diplomacy in Boston, and two DA students are now in Bologna at the John Hopkins University. And we welcome here one student from John Hopkins at the Diplomatic Academy. And also something new, we expanded our PhD program and are having now five PhD students uh, in cooperation with the University of Vienna and three of these students are DA graduates. Uh, I also would like to welcome uh, and new people on our faculty. I want to welcome our new postdoctoral fellows, Rachel Johnston White from Yale, if she's here. There she is. Welcome. <laughs> and Emmanuel Comte from Paris Sorbonne. And a special welcome goes to our distinguished diplomatic academy Fulbright professor, Professor Donald Stoker from the United States Naval War College. <laughs> he already joined us on our first hiring to experience something of the, of the Austrian spirit. And we will also soon enlarge our resident faculty with having an additional chair in European studies jointly again with the University of Vienna. Besides our 10 resident faculty members, which I warmly welcome, we have roughly 70 professorial lecturers from a high number of universities worldwide, and not to mention all the countries. But we also invite practitioners from the foreign ministry, the Austrian and international organizations. For the students, I say we can, you can meet here, and I recommend to do this, also politician, diplomats, scholars from almost everywhere, here at our many public events, 
because this academy is one of the leading venues for international conferences and public lectures. This autumn we start in full force with topics like the conflicts in Yemen, Afghanistan, Korea, human trafficking, R2P, China, or about the underestimated role of the Austrian federal president. <laughs> A new book will be presented in this room, Mr. President, by Professor Adamovich. I would also like to take the opportunity to thank our sponsors who allow all talented students to pursue their studies here irrespective of their financial background, and this is important. It was our philosophy from the very beginning to give support to students who are gifted but do not have the financial means to study at the academy. Between 30 and 40 percent of our students receive some sort of financial support in the form of grants and scholarships other of the DA from the Bundesländer who, uh, who make guarantees and thus a substantial contribution. Therefore, I would like to thank all those public and private institutions and individuals, many of them graduates of the Diplomatic Academy themselves, who have contributed and will do so in the future. And I would like to mention Lili Sucharipa again and also Ambassador Barlefer. Uh, we owe our success also to the support we receive from the Austrian Ministry of Europe, Integration and Foreign Affairs and other contributors like the Organisation Internationale de la Francophonie and the members of the Association of Friends of the Academy. Uh, I think Mr. Rose, uh, the chairman of the board, is, is present, but I'm not so sure. Yes, he is. So welcome, Mr. Rose, the chairman of our board of Association of Friends of the Academy. <laughs> I wish you all a very interesting, rewarding, productive, and enjoyable new academic year. Besides our students and alumni, I want to thank the faculty, my own staff here, the entire and our many our partners that we have, and I hope we will have a successful and joyful year. We promise to continue our work with enthusiasm, that's the least we can do, with energy and belief in the importance of excellent training for all of you, to prepare you for your future, future careers and for being responsible cities, citizens of an ever-changing and in an ever-changing world. I personally strongly believe in enlightenment values. It's worth rereading some of those enlightenment uh, philosophers. Uh, and I would like to, to finish my, my greetings uh, with a sentence by John Locke, who said, we are born with faculties and powers capable of almost anything. Welcome at the Academy.